One of the most dramatic upgrades you can do to your car is the suspension, and let's face it, for most car guys and girls, it's one of the first mods we do to our cars along with aftermarket wheels. Not only does upgrading the suspension completely transform the stance of the car, but it can greatly enhance the driving experience as well so you can get the most out of a high performance sports car. My go-to suspension upgrade for all my cars in the past have always been adjustable coilovers. They are super versatile when it comes to ride height, performance, and comfort, but not all of them are created equal. Today my E90 gets a unique set of coilovers that do things a little bit different. My goal? Well, I want to put power down, properly fit my aggressive wheels onto the car without much compromise. Not only did I go with a high quality coilover system so I can, you know, successfully put down most of the power that this car is producing, in my K700 wheel horsepower plus, but I also wanted that extra bit of versatility when it comes to aggressiveness and wheel fitment. You know, most people buy a coilover system so they can adjust the height however they want to. Um, that's going to really help me with the wheel fitment, especially with these Titan 7 wheels and the R888s, which are super aggressive. So far in the front, I'm having pretty good luck. There's plenty of room up front. The rear, not so much. A good amount of rub, as you guys can see, some of the rubber actually melted off. Uh, not so much because of the width of the wheels itself, but more so the offset, plus 22, super aggressive. They really come out, and especially these R888 tires are super like bubbly on the surface. So uh, they look super meaty. Um, hopefully with this coilover system, we're gonna be able to fit these just right and uh, we won't have any issue. So I was a big fan of the ASC 5100s on my E46 M3, so I decided to go with the same exact setup for the E90 335i. Um, originally, I didn't think AST made them for my platform, but since all their kits are like built to order, you can customize it however you want, and they do have it available. Here's everything that you get. You got adjustable end links. You got the front um, coilovers. I know they look a little bit different because they're inverted. We'll talk more about that later on. Uh, the divorce system in the back. Uh, the struts and then we have the springs here we got the perch to adjust the height level stuff that you guys should already be familiar with you do get some tools included l keys uh, height adjustment and then the traditional kind of hooked style adjuster that most people are familiar with uh, i'm super excited because when it comes to suspension on high performance cars it's very important to have the correct spring rate and then the right dampening and stuff like that for comfort and versatility so i'm super excited to do this today and uh, of course we're gonna be having this guy right here help me out yes. or just do all the work this right here uh controls dampening rebound all in i guess one dedicated uh control here i think it's like 10 or 11 clicks so you can do it soft stiff as much as you want that's something that you play with over time to get it just right uh, the back also has it but this one is actually facing up so that gives you that option um the bump stops here <laughs> i've seen quite a bit of bump stops with all the cars i've ever had this has to be the highest quality bump stop i've ever touched and i'm i'm not even being biased about it these are very good high quality bump stops and they are measured in a way that if you do want to i guess further adjust the height um lower you can actually cut them right in the split middle and that's perfectly okay so you do have two options here built in um, and then you have this suspension packer right here which i think helps with comfort and overall drivability. The camber plates are optional. That's one thing I definitely needed to do. Um, so I can have versatility if I ever take the car to the track, or uh, if I need to clear some very aggressive wheels up front, uh, sort of like how I have, at least I can dial in that camber for handling wise, for look wise, or you know, for them stance boys, not a stance guy, but you can do that if you wanted to. And the overall color is probably my favorite part. You got black and you got like this orange right here. And this orange, uh, I was able to ask the, uh, the CEO of AST and apparently it's some kind of a, national color at the netherlands these are where asts come from they're from the netherlands that's where they ship from this orange is some kind of a national color that they use with along with this lobster that's the first time i've actually noticed the lobster on there yeah so there's a lobster there so there's orange lobster black very cool high quality um i'm very excited to, to rock these on the e90 uh we actually have um the ceo from ast in orlando here today so we're gonna have him join and on the video so he can kind of go into details about the coilover system um and what makes them so special we'll have sean here from psi orlando as well and he'll give his take on them as, as well and why he recommends them on you know bmw cars and in general here's my e46 m3 if you guys have been following the channel for a while i also have AST 5100s on this car as well. And this car drives like an absolute dream. Even though it's essentially slammed, slammed. We got the wheels tucked um, for the most part. And uh, as you guys can see the orange in there, I don't know if you guys can see, yep, there you go, AST. Absolutely love the flexibility of these coilovers. Um, the fact that you can adjust the uh, dampening and the rebound all in one setting is very, very cool. 
Something I did cover in previous videos is, well, actually I just show you guys. Stock BMW Sport Suspension Strut and aftermarket ST Colors. Yeah. Well, we were trying to untighten the ones on this side and since this car lived in New Jersey for a few years, the bolt was just rusty and it broke off. So we had to do this in the meantime. I know, a little bit of ratchet. It was needed to get to this point. So it is what it is. So instead of actually trying to explain to you guys a little bit about the system, we actually have two guys that work behind the scenes here. We have Sean from uh, Precision Sport Industries. You guys are quite familiar with him already. Uh, he runs a performance and maintenance shop here in the Central Florida area for BMWs and Porsche. Um, and then we have Kuhn here coming all the way from the Netherlands. Uh, CEO of AST, he, he came to drop some knowledge about this kit right here, give us some technical information. Uh, so yeah, we'll jump right into it. So the cut, the kit we're gonna actually install on the E9335i, this is the AST5100. Uh, Kuhn, they offer three different versions of these coilovers, correct? You're right. 5100, what is that uh, That kit, who is it intended for? Well, it's, a, it's an inverted one-way system. Uh, 5100 stands for one-way. Uh, then we have the 52 and the 53 uh, 100 suspension which means a two-way and a three-way. Uh, for this car, we've chosen to go with the one-way uh, non-coilover in the rear. As you can see on the, on, the, um, on the table, it has a non-coilover rear dampers, separate spring perches, so the preload adjusters, and the form spring, so they go on the, on the arm. And then for the front, we always do the, the inverted system. So I was actually going to ask you about that. This is not like a traditional coilover system you see out there where the adjustment is towards the top. This one is more towards the bottom and it looks like it's backwards almost in a way. Correct. Well, you, you, you just said it. It's, it's an inverted system. Uh, so the shaft that actually moves is situated here in the, in the outer case. So that sits right here. I'll show you later a, a, a damper that's taken apart. Um, so here you adjust the rebound on the bottom. And then this kit we chosen for the, the top mount, so the, the camera plate, you can adjust it from the top as you can see. So the divorce system is separate spring and shock, that's how OEM E90 is. And that's what most people would require, but we also offer true coilover rear, uh, which means it's a coilover system such as this, mounted outboard, so it's the spring and shock together which requires quick spring changes. You can run all racing springs, uh, but it's normally for track setup cars. So what we're doing is we're gonna take, uh, they actually have uh, uh, a strut over there that we can take a look at, uh, where he's gonna take apart and kind of explain the, the reasoning behind the inverted system and how it can benefit you and benefit your car. Well, obviously now the moving part is 44.2 mil instead of a 14 mil or a 22 mil shaft. The advantage of this is that the side load of the shock is like super strong now. So in cornering, it's just a lot stronger than the non-inverted systems. So let me take this apart real quick. Obviously the knob is in the bottom. You take that off, you unscrew the nut, and then you can take it apart. And this is where the normal shock comes from. This is how it normally is. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, we've made it upside down, inverted. There's a, a low friction seals are in the damper, so in the outer case and that's the PU bushes over there, the yellow ones. Uh, these don't have a lot of grease on them. Normally they have, but this is a demo damper. Mm -hmm. And that means that they can flow in and out pretty quick, like a normal setup. It's a very rare system. You don't really see a lot of company using no. this. That's pretty cool. No, we have only one competitor that does exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And then our two-way and three-way is actually a pretty unique setup. So Kuhn was telling me a little bit about the labels that they have here for the coilover system. I thought I, I thought that was pretty cool. I'll, I'll have them explain exactly what that means. Well, every shock, every suspension kit that we built have a number on there. It's a traceability number. Uh, it's uh, it's a number that's in our system, mm -hmm. and that shows who built it, uh, when it was built, to who it was sold, um, what setting was used, what spring rates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that means that we can. If you have an accident or something broke, we can just build you one damper. Plus also we can uh, find out what was done to the kit. Also if you rebuild the kit, because all of our kits are uh, rebuildable, uh, we can find out what was rebuilt, who did what, when it was done, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's like your, uh, your, your maintenance book from the car. Mm -hmm. Everything is traceable, we can see exactly what and when happened. So the AST drop links are unique. They're optional with the kits, but we have marked which kits you need them for. So we recommend them because this is a, a ball joint in here, but it's in, it has this, it's encapsulated. It basically protects from dirt and debris getting in. A lot of times drop links fail and they make the kits noisy because they don't have this protection. So they just over time start to make more and more noise and it's normally this part. So this is a really neat, nicely made part that goes along with the kit. Our system inside, all the materials we use are closed off. And with closed off, I mean 
the alum, uh, aluminum is, is uh, anodized, uh, all the steel parts are coated, so it doesn't make the oil change, the viscosity, mm. it doesn't get dirty inside. So even after miles and miles and miles, you open up the damper, the oil is still the same viscosity and still clean uh, as when we put it in. So we just spoke about the internal uh, side of the damper. Let's talk a little bit about the outside. Um, in Holland, we coat all our lower cases in KTL, which is a uh, sort of base coat that mm. is used in uh, construction. So it doesn't rust, it doesn't wear out, it just stays as it is. Our, one of our, our biggest uh, countries we sell to is the UK. And the UK is just stones, snow, <laughs> salt, like everything you don't want for your damper. And that's why we really stepped up our game and make sure that the quality is 100%. 100%. So uh, I'll point out a couple of the key points on the, on the damper. There's an adjustable sway bar link bracket, which spins, obviously adjusts the height, and then it, that lets you preload the sway bar and the link setup for adjusting your setup. It's actually locked by this lock ring here, which uses the traditional tool, which everyone sees. Mm -hmm. But then on this, we also use this tool to adjust the preload and the spring. And this, this is, most of the ASTs have a tender spring or helper spring with a main spring option. All right, so let's close it out with this, guys. So the, the question is, why AST, right? So a lot of people, when they're shopping, they, they're trying to get the most value they can for, I guess, the pricing. ASTs, you know, a little bit higher up there. Obviously, you get quality and stuff like that. Why would somebody want to get ASTs over something else? What, I guess, differentiates you guys, and why is it worth going that route? Well, I think we spoke about a lot of things already, but I think the main things are custom built, um, rebuildable throughout the whole lifetime of the, of the dampers. Um, the high quality, everything is made in Holland. Uh, it's not universal, so it's really bait and built for the end user. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, it's also a program. Like some customers start with a 5200, let's say a two-way kit, and then later on down the road, they're running uh, slicks, arrow, other things. We can upgrade the kit to a 5300 with a low cost. They don't have to throw away the 5200s and then buy a brand new kit. So it's a program. You can even go from 5100, which is on the table, mm -hmm. to 52 to 53 if you wanted to do that. And you can stick with the same damper. So it's a, it's really a lifetime damper. For a lot of the um, you know restoration projects we do, like E30 M3 and 2002, people want one damper that they have in the car forever that they just rebuild because those are spindles and stuff. So that's a good example. Well, that makes it very versatile. And I mean, a lot of the times I see E46, E90 X3, uh, M3 cars on the track, a lot of them are rocking AST and it has to be a reason why they're rocking ASTs, man. Yeah. It's a quality and performance. I mean, it's unlike anyone else. And we just don't replace dampers when they go bad. We're able to repair them and fix them and find out why and go from there. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, taking your time to explain a little bit about AST. Yeah, I appreciate no you guys partner, partner up with us and um, we'll do a video while, when the coilovers are installed and uh, See how they feel, how they perform, and then I'll update you guys, Mr. Ali. Back oh. at it again. Oh. Um, and this perfectly segues to the control arms. We decided to go with uh, M3 control arms, lower and front, courtesy of Ali, since he upgraded his on his E90. Um, so we got the, the stock E90 non-M3 ones. And then we have the M3 ones. All right, Mr. Expert, what's the difference between the M3 ones and the non-M3 ones? The Actually, I can already see. The front ones the are the bushings. Here, you have a different bushing. Uh, as far as the design. The design is the same. Yeah, I think they're the same. And they're the same shape. So That's it's just the bushing. It, yeah, the bushing here is different. This one says TRW. Versus, you know, regular BMW. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Same thing. Uh, here, OE. there's the same thing. Spherical bushing versus uh, the rubber bushing that's on a non-M. So, and I think these have, uh, these give you negative one camber, like more than uh, those. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, yeah, the old one was like rusted in there. It was nice. By the way, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see like, the build process, I do have tons of videos on the E90. I'll leave a link down to the playlist in the description box below. Check it out, guys. I got the DR700 kit when we took it to the dyno um, and a bunch of other modifications like the wheels, um, the tires, 
We have the head unit that was uh, installed onto the car, which is very, very nice, very nice touch. And then we have, of course, the digital cluster that you guys are going crazy over. Uh, so make sure and check that out. I got all the videos to the E90 down in the description below. Oh yeah, and this is a major upgrade for the 335 guys. Reasonably affordable and it looks very good. F80 and three brakes, video to that down. Link in the description. There is uh, no update on the rear ones. I told you guys that we'd update you guys on that. We're just waiting for the, for the bracket for the rears and to see which rotors we're gonna run back there. But I already have the F80 M3 calipers for the rear as well. Uh, looking for a solution. Hopefully we'll get that soon. After suspension is done, uh, we're pretty close to getting this car on the road so we can put some power down. We have the LSD, uh, which is ready to be put on as well. Um, we have the one piece drive shaft there, unbreakable axles. I was able to partner up with Seems Legit Garage, so they have the full kit to make sure that my car is super reliable with all that power. Um, and then some other small stuff that we'll go over maybe in another video, but I'm very excited on actually driving this car. I mean, we've been building it, but not a lot of driving on it. That's a very interesting design. Oh, there you go. You know what's interesting that on the, when we were doing the ones on the E93, they sell these bushings separately, but at that point, it's not even worth it. Just buy the whole damn arm that comes with the bushing. And of course, if you're gonna do suspension on the car, you might as well just take care of everything that goes with it. Like in our case, the front control arms. Um, we're not doing anything in the rear yet because we're waiting to install the diff and the axle back here. Once we do that, then we'll start doing like adjustable camber arms and stuff like that. So the back is going away for now. The front we are taking care of now. See, they scratched off. BMW. So it's TRW, but it's actually BMW. It's actually BMW. But and you pay half the price. This one is metal. This one is rubber. Spherical. Yeah. And it's beefier. Yeah. Less comfort. And this More is precise. Also. And for all you, the question, the orientation, our triple eights are not directional tires. They are in and out tires, okay? A lot of you guys that said that we installed the tires wrong on the Titan 7 wheels. And actually had a few people question the M on the caliper. They said that that was also installed wrong. Yeah, it comes off of the assembly line, <laughs> where front right or front left. Yeah, well actually let me show you guys. So you see how it's facing this way, and you go back to this side, and it's actually facing this way. Yeah. So we didn't install it the wrong way. If you look at the, where you drain it, I mean where you bleed it. Yeah, it's up there where it's supposed to be, not yeah. down there. If I put that upside down, guess what? You're gonna have mushy brakes. <laughs> if you don't believe me, do it. <laughs> Let me know. Well, here's something that's very interesting. This is sad to say the least. Uh, these are the end links that came with the coilover system that is currently on the E90. Uh, yeah, well, we can already tell that the the seals that's protecting the joints here are pretty torn up. There's no fluid there. There's nothing going on in there. Yeah. Anyways, here's a comparison compared to the AST ones. You can really tell which ones are more robust. Plus these ones are not adjustable. These are adjustable so you can uh, adjust them to, to the appropriate length that you want to use or the correct length, let's say. But uh, there's a massive, massive difference between the AST ones and these right here. Yeah. Well, it didn't help that the car lived in New Jersey for a while, but just look at the thickness. Look at that. Yeah. Here's the thing, guys. When it comes to suspension, if you're ever going to install any kind of lowering springs or coilovers to lower the car, if you have anything that's bad, bushings, control arms, anything like that, you're going to feel the side effects of that, like the negative effects of it, um, like 10x. 10x. It puts more strain onto those suspension components and the car just rides like trash. On the E93 335 that I used to have, I skipped out on some of the suspension parts, lowered the car, I already had 19 inch wheels with low profile tires. Absolute nightmare. I had to go back in there and just change out all the suspension parts, uh, new end links, new bushings, new arms in the back and stuff like that. Um, if you're gonna do this type of project, like coilovers, make sure you do all of it at once. Just save yourself the headache, spend a little bit extra money, you'll be happier in the long run. By the way, for those of you guys that care, um, we have the E30 here and it's actually indoor, it's gonna stay indoor. And we have some major plans for the E30. I'm very excited, I'm gonna be working on it a lot and making some videos on it. Hopefully you guys watch it and like the videos. This is one of the projects that I'm super excited for. I've always been excited for it, it's just never got a lot enough views or I couldn't justify making videos on this car. 
but we have a lot of big plans a lot of big plans um, and i hope you guys enjoy the videos on this and i've been working on this car pretty much every day uh, little by little off camera can't wait to update you guys on that stay tuned for that yeah so you take these off i'm being lazy so i didn't take off the strut power brace whatever it's called i'm not taking it off because dude that's lazy for real so here's a cola or system i had in the car and here's the ast ones Nice. Guys, this is not a comparison video, and I'm not throwing shots at whatever company this is right here. Just want to show you guys exactly what I was working with before. That's it. Clapped out. Let's just say this is a more affordable brand. <laughs> and, of course, AST is a little bit on the premium side. Uh, yeah. Of course, one main difference is that I don't have camera plates on top here, so I don't have any adjustability there. Um, the springs seem a little bit different too. Ta-da! That's butter right there. We're gonna slam it or what? No. There we are. So something I kind of learned about this is that these are like extra adjustment rings. If you want to go a bit lower, you can just remove them. So in this case, we're removing one of them. If you really want to slam the vehicle. No, no stand station here, but you leave one of them if you go a little bit higher, then you add the second one. But I think what we're doing here was just trying to cheat so we can fit the strut in between the fender. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I lift up by the caliper. Go up. Go up. There you go. Ah, my right hand is dead. Hey, you can't say I didn't help you, bro. Ah, can I let go? Yes. Ah, ah. There you go. Proof that I helped. Well, actually, that kind of segues perfectly into since I have this lift at all times for my cars. I will be doing some wrenching myself on little small modifications for the car, so I'm very excited. You can pretty much be here whenever working on a car, little small things. So uh, you guys will see me wrenching a little bit more than I usually do because this is awesome. Bro, can you explain what you're doing right here? There's a lot of science into it. There you go. End legs are installed, guys. Well, I haven't tightened them. Well, well anyways. Uh, I tightened these. These yeah. are tightened, but the, the, the height adjustment is not tight yet. Are you going to wait to align it before you do that? Is that what it is? Uh, you gotta have preload on both sides, so you have kind of a uh, no tension on the sway bar, and that's the way you're supposed to adjust them. So in other words, you gotta have all four wheels actually on the ground load, so then you can properly adjust them and tighten them. So for a lot of those shops that just install them and just you know roll with it, that's not the right way to do it. You gotta have it load, wheels down, which makes it pretty tough when you're in your garage at home, that's, because that's what that's why they're adjustable, so you yeah. can adjust them. But if you buy adjustable and you just install ah, it, it's good. Then it's not adjustable. It's not work. Yeah, but okay, so if you're in a garage and you have to put load on it and your car's super low. Put bricks on it underneath. Put bricks? Four bricks underneath, put your e-brake up, that's it. It's that's not it. that safe, but roll uh, with it. Yeah, not approved. Yeah. But that's an idea. Or get a alignment rack in yeah. your garage. True. Yeah, do it the right way, guys. Take it to a shop. PSI. A lot of you guys are already familiar if you've been around the channel. I sell performance parts for BMWs, F30, 335, F80, F10, F90. You name it, VehicleVirals.com. I will leave a link down in the description below. A lot of the parts that I have on my car, I do sell on the website. Make sure and check it out. Help support your boy. Buy performance parts through me. Customer service, A+, shipping very fast. You'll be glad you did it through me and not the competitor. Just trust me when I say that. So the reason that we had the OEM uh, strut on that side is because this piece broke off. It was pretty rusty. This is the very. This is why it's very important that when you guys get a callover system, I'll uh, get one that has some kind of a coating to protect it because uh, this one just crumbled. We were trying to untighten the other side and it crumbled. That's why we no longer have it. And this one looks like it's about to have the exact, the same exact fate if we keep using it. So yeah, don't ask me uh, that you guys want to buy this. This is going in the trash. Removing the rear shocks is pretty simple. It's annoying, but pretty simple. 
Remove the fabric and you expose the nut to loosen the strut. On a convertible BMW, eh, there's a lot more to remove, but it's still doable. It's very important that when installing coilovers or even a new OEM strut, inspect things such as the bump stop and the top hat. The ones that were on my car were in pretty rough shape and crumbled just by looking at it. With ASTs, you're supposed to use a new or existing top hat, but we decided to just use poly bushings instead for better durability and less flex. So obviously it makes it easier if you have two people doing this. So you can hold it up while the other person tightens it up up top. All right, I'm gonna please some of you guys because I did not imagine you guys would care so much about me leaving the tires, I mean, leaving the stickers, tire stickers on the actual tire. I got so many comments that, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the sticker off the tires. Here you go, guys. I hope I hope you guys are satisfied. I read all the comments you guys post. This one is for you guys. There you go. And that's as much as I'm gonna get to. Enjoy. There you have it, guys. We have the coilers successfully installed. We are actually doing some things in between as well. Decided to quiet down the beast just a little bit and add a resonator. And we did a little bit of a custom work here so we could get really be a uh, very good fitment underneath the car since i'm rocking a single turbo and the fitment was a little bit odd but uh yeah ast uh coilovers installed on the back super fresh looks very good like i said we'll change out some of the rear suspension stuff in a future video when we do the lsd and uh, drive shaft and stuff like that but uh it's looking very good time to try to fit this meaty setup in the car and see if we can get it to ride uh, in an efficient way without rubbing Damn dog, meaty. I'm telling you guys, these wheels fully forged by Titan 7, the TS7 uh, model, they look freaking dope on the E90. I've seen them on uh, E90 XM3 uh, before. This is how I got the idea. And then you add, uh, you add our triple eights to it and whoo, that looks good. Good thing is we didn't have fitment problems in the front, so we're not too worried about that. It's more so the rear. One thing to keep an eye out when installing coilovers is the fitment of the strut. Sometimes depending on the wheel offset, there could be a bit of a conflict. In our case, it was pretty close, but we really hadn't dialed in the suspension appropriately yet. Bro, this setup looks freaking good. About to, about to make this the cleanest E90 out there, baby. Oh my God! <laughs> that actually looks good. But I can tell you, I'm not rocking that setup. We're definitely going higher, but that looks good for pictures. Maxed out. What do you guys think about this fitment right here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's... That is not drivable though. One, um, that looks actually very good. But uh I approve. Yeah, well Man, this looks aggressive. Dude, that looks crazy, don't it? Look at the back. The back looks aggressive. It's like hey. Oh yeah. This definitely looks like a 700 horsepower car now. Before with the E46 M3 wheels? Nah. Obviously the front was too low and the rear was a bit too high, so we continued to adjust the height on the coilover system. It took us about three times to get it exactly how we wanted. Even though the car wasn't properly aligned yet, it was time to take the E90 for a drive and see if the wheels cleared the fender without rubbing. Unfortunately for us, the rear tires rubbed on uneven roads and hard bumps. The car already had its fenders rolled and pulled in the past, so the only thing we can do is either change the wheel setup or trim the inside of the fender, which is exactly what we decided to do the fenders so here's the scoop guys we actually uh try to pull and roll the fenders just a bit more to add clearance to the super aggressive wheels that i have uh still gonna be cutting it pretty close um that's what i get for going super aggressive if i decided to get 265 for the rear instead of 275 i would probably clear it with no problem but i want to stick to the 275 just because of the look of it the meatiness i like that a lot so last thing to do is because if we try to pull it or uh, roll it anymore it's probably just gonna just form this corner right here we don't want that so we're gonna go into the the lip part we're gonna start shaving a little bit i know not something i really wanted to do not something people want to do to your car uh, but we're gonna do it slightly uh for the sake of it looking very very good while still being super functional you're lucky i like you guys a lot and i don't want to modify the setup with different tires or different wheels so we're gonna make this work for the sake of it looking good All right, check it out. There's more light on this side. Check it out, nice and smooth. Trimmed it, smoothed it out. Um, and then of course, right here, the inside, the liner, 
You have to cut it a little bit since there's not a lip around the, the fender here. It won't stay there. So we have to cut a little bit around it and then tuck it in here and tuck it on the top side right up here. Yeah, wheels should fit now. If they don't, I'm just gonna cry. And after trimming the fenders, the fitment was perfect. The car looked great and there was no rubbing. The car got aligned off camera and here's what the finished product looks like. Make sure and like the video and subscribe for more in the future.